today we are doing some needle felting and as it is May the 4th we will be doing a little needle felted porg. I believe this is a puffin cross with a seal cross with a puffy is the whole idea behind a porg but we'll do this little fluffy woolly porg today. I'm going to be using mainly Corydale sliver so I'll be using the white the raisin, for, uh, dark fawn, tiny, tiny amount of the normal fawn. And then just for the black and the orange, I will be using Corydale wool tops. To get started, I am going to start off with my white sliver and roll it into a basic Org type shape. Break a bit off. So you can see that's kind of a porg shape. I'll just get that to hold a little bit. So just give it a quick stab. Just so it's holding. Then I'll take I don't know, about twenty centimetres worth wrap that around to make sure it's all holding nice and tight. And this is the bit that's going to take the longest, building up your core base for this. But the more time you spend on this, the firmer you make it, the easier everything else is going to be. So it's just a case of moving and working. You can really see, you know, where these big pinchy bits are. It's really, really not holding there. And you can feel it under your needle as well. You can use a multi-tool or I like this clover pen tool. I tend to use it just with two needles in rather than the three. But you can put three needles into it. Flip it over, work the other side. Don't worry too much at the moment. If you have a look at this one, it's quite round on top and flat on the bottom. Don't worry about that. We can sculpt that later. I've been working this for about five minutes now. It's taking on a porg shape. I'm just going to wrap a bit more around the middle here. I kind of feel that this has naturally gone flatter than this side if it hasn't and you've got a complete dome on either side just give it a good stab just to flatten it out a bit i just need to make him a little bit fatter around the middle so just take some more of the white sliver tightly wrap it around the tighter you put it on the more condensed it already is so the less condensing you need to do with the needle. Just stab that on all the way around. I'm now happy with the size and shape of that. He's got a little bit of a tum on him. Now I'm going to add the raisin, which is going to go over the back and just slightly down the sides, probably taking it just over 180 degrees around the body. For this I'm just taking tiny tiny tufts. If you feel that there's a side that you prefer for the back and a side you prefer for the front, now's your time to choose. I'm not overly fussed. So all I'm going to do is pop it on top of the head and snap that in. And again, pull it quite tight down the body. I'm just going to let those ends go into the base of the porg. And stab this piece on quite firmly. Take another tuft. Going to lay it next to that first one we put on. 
you always like to really secure it at one end so I can give it a proper tug to get it down the body. Don't worry about your edge line being too sharp because the fur or the feathers on them, I suppose the, the, the feathers on them, would naturally kind of blend a wee bit there. And the next piece, this one's a bit fatter than the others. So that's all on there nice and firm now I'm going to do his little wings whenever I have to do a pair of something I always do two at the same time just so I can make sure that I take the right amount of wool tops so I've got about 20 centimeters here I'm gonna split that in half so I can make sure that they're roughly the same size to make a wing, what I'm going to do is stab a line straight across the middle. Now I'm flipping that over and give it a rough stab all over. In fact, I think this one piece here is going to be enough for two wings. So what I'll do here now is split this in half this way because the fibres are laying in this direction. There we go. Neaten that wing up a wee bit. And then just fold these edges in. We want to make sure that we keep this end fluffy for attaching to the body. Try not to stab too far through. Obviously you're going to go into your foam a wee bit because you are making something quite thin. And just give it a rough stab. What you can also do is get two pieces of cardboard to really neaten the edges up and hold the wing in between them like this and just stab along. If you've got leather finger guards you can hold your wing with leather finger guards. And then you can see that's really neatened that edge up. Flip it over. You want to make sure that it's cardboard as opposed to just card. You want something a little bit thick. And there's one wing so repeat for the second now I have my two little wings I'm gonna pop them on with the fluffy ends I'm just gonna hold the fluffy ends against the body and stab those ends in Same for the other one, hold it on, there we go. Now we're going to make him some little orange feet. For that I'm using Corydale wool tops as opposed to the sliver. But I've got a small amount here. Split that in two. Make sure the piles are similar. And for the feet, because these are quite small feet, I'm actually just going to roll 
along the, the length of the fibres, so the fibres are sitting in this direction. And give it a felt. Although we haven't got many fluffy ends on this side, I am going to keep this side slightly unfelted just so that those unfelted fibres will be able to go into the base of the fork and make sure that they're all nice and secure. Again, what you can do, you can hold in between your two pieces of card just to get a nice clean edge to it. that and repeat for the second. I have my two little feet here. All I'm going to do is take the porg, place them on the base just so they're peeking out and stab those fluffy ends in. Pop the other one on. Kind of put them almost in a V shape on the base so they're slightly splayed. Just give them a good firm stab on. He may not stand at the moment, don't worry. Oh, he stands. <laughs> the next part we're going to do is the face. So we're going to be using dark fawn, black, a little bit more white and a tiny, tiny amount of fawn. So for the dark fawn, it's only tufts you're going to be needing. What we're going to do is take two little tufts of dark fawn. I'm going to place the one over the eye area and stab it almost in the middle of where the face will be. If you can kind of see that. And now that that's secure on there, I'm just going to fold it over and take these ends up and around the side, just so that they start to blend in with the raisin. We'll do the same for this little tuft. Lay it on. Stab into the middle and bring it around. Don't worry about this little seam in the middle, that's going to be covered. Now what we're going to do is take a little bit more of the white. That's not my white, that's my fawn. There's my white. And we're going to create this nose type area. For that I'm taking kind of the staples length, not, not an awful lot. I'm going to roll it so the fibres are laying in this direction. I'm going to roll it up. Similar to how we did the feet, we keep it quite long. Going to give it a rough stab, not too much, just enough to get it holding. I'm going to hold it so that the top of this is going to sit at the base of the dark fawn that we put on. And as I attach this, I'm not pulling it on tight, and all I'm going to do at least initially, is stab the edges in because we want to make sure that we maintain this ridge. This is firm, but stab along these edges. Make sure these are nice and firm before doing the centre. So this will take a little bit more work because you're not working with already condensed fibres. You're having to sculpt them and 
condense them down with the needle but it's really really effective where those edges are you can just kind of take them under the armpit a wee bit now it's just a case of making sure that this nose area is on firmly and is firmly felted don't felt straight down like that felt at an angle so you don't want it to go into the head area that's all nice and firm on there now I'm just going to take a wispy bit of white now I'm gonna sit part of it part of it just up in between where the eyes will sit bring that down and then this bit of wispy bit I'm just going to spread out over the belly it's going to help to hide this seam here now I shall put the mouth and nose on I try to always leave the eyes until very last as soon as they have eyes it feels like they're alive so we will do the mouth first I am literally just pinching a tiny tiny amount out so this is the black wool tops now I will give it a bit of a twizzle don't know if I want quite that much what I will do is I will snap the fibers just to make them a little bit shorter find the midpoint of your wool tops and the midpoint of your mouth and stab in at that one single point you don't want to be using a multi-tool for this part you want you definitely want the single needle and then just stab along that line Same for the other side of the little mouth. I kind of do a bit of a stab out and then I drag it gently. Just so that the barbs on the needle are picking up the tiny fibres and stabbing them in. Make sure it's roughly the same length on either side. all that last little bit in and then for the nose it is a tiny amount I'm going to take that amount there and break that in half so that's two nostrils there give it a roll so that you're just starting to pre-felt and then they sit in the centre of the nose, quite close together. Pick that one up. Now for the eyes, we're going to do a similar thing that we did for the nostrils, just with more wool. So take more and again split in half so that you're working with two amounts that looks roughly the same and give it a roll just to start that felting process mm, I think that's a bit too much try halving it Remember, you can always add, but you can't take away. It's always better to start with smaller eyes and making them bigger. That's a bit better. Now to attach the eyes, I'm just going to walk my needle around the outside edge. So around the outside of where the black is. 
So that's defining the shape before actually working the fibres and felting in the middle. You want to make sure the shape is defined before doing the felting. So you can see that that eye is still sitting proud of the face and I will stab that in nice and firmly now. And it seems I've got a bit more white on the right hand side here so I'll add a bit more here just to make it look more symmetrical and more balanced. Just a small amount. Then we're going to outline the eye, the black area, with fawn in the sliver. I'm taking pinchy bits, just like I did with the mouth. Again, I'm dividing in two. Now I'm going to twizzle these a bit. Just so we're working with a thinner piece doesn't really matter where you start around the eye and like the mouth I'm just stabbing with the single needle where I want these fibers to go I'll just break a bit off got plenty to go around this eye And let those ends overlap. Now repeat for the second. Now they have absolutely massive eyes so they need some nice big glints. I tend to do two glints, one slightly larger than the other. just break up my fibres and again pre-felt them in my hands so I think I will do the glint on the right hand side of each eye and again just define it and stab into the glint if you start stabbing this way you're going to make it much much bigger and you're going to make those white fibres go into the black area, which you don't want. You want to keep them all contained. I find it easier sometimes to pop small amounts on my needle and then start stabbing them in. I'm going to do the same again for another two glints. These ones will be slightly smaller. I'll sit these above where I put the, the other two. And again, this is when you want to be using a single needle, not a multi-tool. And there we have a woolly pork. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. May the 4th be with you, and I will see you again next Monday. Thank you very much. Happy crafting. Bye.